Good night, guys. Hope you're all well. This is Mr. Yorkie's World with a flight today from Ibiza, which is Lima Echo India Bravo, all the way to my hometown airport of Doncaster Sheffield Airport or Robin Hood Airport, which is Echo Golf Charlie November. Now, I've actually already put the fuel in, but we have 19,726 pounds of fuel. That's 6,515 of that will be for reserves, and we will hopefully be using £13,211. I've no idea why you need all those figures, but there we go. So I've just aligned the IRSs, I've already put the fuel and payload in, so we are ready to go. I think we've already got a co-route set up, so I'm going to try and put it in. I don't even know whether I should be doing this right now, because I need to go to the pause in it page. But anyway, Ref Airport, we're at Ibiza. Gate number 30, which I don't know why we're at gate 30, because for some reason it's put us in a very weird position. We're not going to actually do a pushback today because of the position that it's put us in. It's uh, given us a straightforward uh, taxiway uh, to, the, to, to the actual runway, so that should be pretty interesting. No, it's not going to accept the, uh, the entry. I think it's got to be 001 on the end, because I saved it. There we go. There we go, it's accepted it. Right, so activate and execute, so that's saved all the route and everything. Let's have a quick check. Everything's looking fine. So we are almost ready to set off. Our cruising altitude today will be 37,000 feet. So that's pretty cool. We're, as I said, we're on a straightforward path straight from Ibiza to Doncaster, uh, Sheffield in the United Kingdom. Straight onto the ILS and hopefully going to be landing at ILS runway number 02. So let's put the zero fuel weight in. Reserves, we need to put in approximately... I'm going to put 2.9. I've no idea whether that's correct, but we'll just put 2.9. It's an estimate, so it probably isn't. Cost index would be... No, not, not 90, not 90. 30, sorry. Uh, I don't know the cost index, but I always just put a round number, like 30 in. Uh, 6,000 for the transition altitude, for it's a European zone, and 370 for the flight altitude. Let's just execute that and go to N1 limit. We're going to be doing a 24k D-rate takeoff. Noise abatement with flaps 5. Let's just work out the V speeds. There we go. 148 for V2. So we'll put that into the uh, MCP. Switch on the auto throttle and flight director and everything. And we'll also put the uh, altitude in there. I might as well just do that now before I forget. This is actually a very rare thing for me lately because I've been learning how to fly the, the lighter aircraft and stuff. So... Yeah, this is going to be the first time in quite a while I've actually done a, a, a sort of a, a flight like this. Let's just put the uh, runway heading in the course selector, like so. I tend to do this, I don't know whether this is the correct uh, way to do it with the course and heading, please correct me, uh, but as far as I am aware, heading is the way that you are heading, and course is the uh, heading that you intend to take, I believe. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, runway 24 we're going to be taking off from, so I've took the heading of that runway and just stuck it into both for now. Uh, we're going to work out the landing flaps that we need and all that lot. We'll probably change halfway through. Set the frequencies, which is 110.95 in NAV1 radios. And we're also going to turn on the uh, TA and RA. And we'll give it a quick test just to make sure everything's going fine. I don't really do many of the tests like I should do, to be honest. I really need to start doing that, but uh, I don't really do that at the minute. I'm not really that advanced. Oh, that's a positive. TCAS test has passed, so we know that we're all uh, we're all good. So we can start turning on the lights. All exterior lights. We'll switch those on. We'll switch the fuel pumps on. Turn the two centre ones off. Yeah, we need to we need to turn the centre ones off. I'm still getting used to the actual procedures, guys. So just uh, bear with me. The isolation valve auto. We also need to turn on the window heat switches, the probe heat switches, the anti ice. I don't know whether we need that, but the uh, hydraulic pumps as well. And emergency lights, set to armed, seatbelt signs and the chime need to be on. So that's all sorted and we'll switch on the yaw damper as well. Just wait for the APU now to fire up. Just set the ignition switch to centre, I always do that because it's just easier than setting it from left to right or from right to left when you're starting the engines. So we will set the trim to 5 and we'll also put up the engine display for when we actually do the pushback or lack of pushback and start because we won't be doing a pushback today like I said because we've uh, been put on a rather unusual place in this airport uh, gate 30 it's decided to put us in a very strange predicament where we don't need pushing back so I'm just gonna have to start the engines without a pushback which is weird so remove ground power 
and we will set the parking brake. I think we're all sorted near enough. We are getting there. Just set the other, the uh, first officer's uh, FMC onto the legs page as well as mine because we don't need it on the pushback page like I usually have it. And we are almost set to go, I believe. I think what I will do is close the doors now. Check the uh, cargo doors as well because I don't know whether they're actually closed. I can't remember whether I closed them or not. Got a warning, there we go, just clear that warning, that's from the uh, APU I think. So the doors are open and the air stair is open, so we need to close both of those. I'm not sure whether the cargo ha cargo hatches are open or not, but we'll soon find out. No, nope, they're not, so that's good. So we are closing the main exit and removing the air stair now. And we should be setting off very, very shortly. As I said, this is about a two and a half hour flight, roughly. It can take a little bit less and it can take a bit longer as well, depending on uh, circumstances, obviously. If you have to go, go around and stuff, for example. You know, if there's any hold-ups, which there won't be, because on this occasion there's got no, I've got no traffic enabled, so we will not be doing a go-around. We'll be just going straight to the runway and doing a straightforward landing. So we are all good. Just looking at everything, just to see if it's set up correctly because you can never be too careful we've got no sort of orange lights that need immediate attention at the minute so let's just set the uh, engines to start and we'll begin the startup procedure ready for uh, departure so if anybody's wondering no I have not yet got my uh, FTX global packs I've not actually got the texture packs or anything yet uh, it's still in the works I'm still planning on getting those as soon as I get the uh, get the money, which will be very, very soon. I'll be buying all the packs at once, because obviously I want to get the best out of the simulator. I've actually just overclocked my uh, CPU to 4.4 GHz. The Intel Core i7-4790K is, uh, is the CPU that I've actually got. You can see the engines are spooling up now, so that's pretty good. When that gets to about 56, that will mean that the uh, engine number 2 has fully started, and we'll be able to start engine number 1. So I'm just waiting for that now, 49.50, so it's nearly there. <laughs> Again, the uh, ignition lever is in the middle because it just makes it easier. There we go, engine number one starting now. That's engine number two completely started. So as I was saying, yeah, it's a 4790K at 4.4 uh, gigahertz now. I've got a lot, of, a lot more smoothness in the sim, and I'm really, really happy about that. Uh, I've got a few tweaks as well. This is version 3, but believe it or not, I have actually uh, experienced a little bit of stuttering, and some tweaks have actually uh, helped. So I, if, if you want to know the tweaks that I use, uh, you feel, feel free to message me uh, on Facebook or one of my social media websites. Uh, I might even do a video about it, to be honest, and let people know exactly what it is that I use, because I'm getting immense smoothness. And this is, you know, even in busy airports, no sort of stutters or anything, or even if there are, they're not sort of identifiable, really. Not really noticeable, so I am I could not be any happier. I honestly could not be any happier with this sim at this minute in time. It's absolutely fantastic. We're going to set the flaps to five before I forget. And also, I'm trying to think, there's something I've forgotten. I know for a fact there's something I've forgotten to do. That's it. I need to actually transfer the power, switch off the APU, uh, taxi lights needs to go on, and I also need to actually set the pressurisation because I haven't done that yet. So we'll set the packs and everything, and then I'll get round to doing the pressurisation in just a second. Uh, everything else is perfectly fine, I'm just checking. So we'll do the pressurisation to 37,000 feet. Almost forgot that then. You see, when you're recording, you tend to... Or at least I tend to anyway, uh, forget something or just like do something wrong or something. So I try and keep on the ball at all times. <laughs> So, right, anyways, I will shut up talking because we are nearly ready now to set off. Everything is perfect. I've got no sort of lights telling me that there's a problem. I've just turned on the fuel pumps in the center because we have got fuel in the center, a little tiny bit, and we are almost ready. So I think what we'll do is add a little bit of thrust and get moving, release the parking brake and everything, and we will start to taxi our way around Ibiza. Here we go. So I think it's around a 25 knot sort of limit that you're allowed to taxi around here. I think, I think it's either 15 or 25. I'm still learning these sort of procedures for ground taxi, you know, for, for ground stuff like taxiing and, and etc, etc. I was a bit worried about hitting that post then on the left hand side. I'm sure I won't do that though. But anyways, let's taxi to the runway and get this thing off the ground.
Right, so here we are, finally at the uh, runway 24. Everything's clear. Let's just set the engines to continuous. Switch on the landing lights, taxi lights off, and we'll make our way onto the uh, onto the runway. See if we can do a nice clean takeoff without any mistakes. This will be a first for me. I always end up making a mistake when it comes to taking off. It's like I either lose control of the aircraft, <laughs> like the I won't be able to keep it on the uh, on the center line or something, or I'll just completely fuck up. But Anyway, we'll try and go. We'll try and just go. We've clicked Toga. So we're going straight to the speed that we set on the MCP for takeoff. And we should. We should be golden. We are doing pretty well so far. I've managed to keep it in the centre. <laughs> I don't know whether it's something to do with my joystick or something, but I've had some serious problems lately. I think I've had to reset the settings about ten times because I'm sure it's something to do with the settings. Or like the sensitivity or something that I've set, but the plane always wants to go in the left direction, even when I'm taxiing. So there we are, we have taken off. Excellent, gear up. So we're doing pretty well so far, nice little takeoff there. Speed and everything is set, let's set the auto brakes to off. Set the uh, LNAV and VNAV going as well. And then hopefully when we're about a thousand feet in the air, here we go, set the auto... Oh no. Oh shit. No, it doesn't want to work. No. Oh, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. It's because I've... That's it. It's because I'm using the uh, joystick. I'm still pressing on the joystick trying to keep it at a certain pitch. We're all sorted. So now, it is the computer's aircraft. <laughs> the uh, the autopilot is doing takeover. So put the legs page on. And we're all sorted. So, we are now airborne. On our way back to uh, sunny England, even though it's night time. <laughs> it's probably rainy England, to be honest. But uh, we'll set the flaps up. And we've got a right-hand turn coming up very, very shortly as well. So flaps up completely now. Everything's looking good. We've got a positive rate of climb ever since uh, leaving the, the ground, so that's good. So yeah, about these packs, uh, these texture packs. I'm going to be getting FTX Global and FTX England, as I said before. I'm also going to get Rex might get it with soft clouds or I might just get something else for the uh, for the weather uh, I'm definitely getting active sky next at some point I'll be getting GSX ground services and I am pretty sure I'll be getting some other packs as well at some point for some other uh, locations around the world because I won't be just be doing the in England I'll be doing you know some American sort of airports and stuff like that and you know maybe French ones maybe a bit of Germany might just get them all eventually like just to upgrade everything on the simulator if, if I can handle it or if I can afford it should I say but uh, but yeah apart from that also I will probably be getting either a light aircraft or I'll be getting the triple uh, seven by PMDG because I really love the way that looks you know it's uh, it looks like a fantastic aircraft uh, I've seen Matt Davies uh, fly this aircraft as well. He's, he's, he's sort of doing his videos uh, mainly on the 777 now, uh, or 777 or whatever, you, whichever way you want to say. Uh, so, to be quite honest, that's probably going to be the aircraft I get. And I might just get like another small aircraft at some point soon as well, because I'm, I'm mainly training on like the smaller ones at the minute, like light aircraft, as I've been saying for the past few videos. So, uh, I will be wanting to either use the uh, Coronado. A36 Bonanza because that is a stock one anyway so it's, it's it looks amazing and it you know performs amazingly as well so it's a nice little stock aircraft so I might just stick with that and then just buy like PMDG 777 and just make do with it you know just just get just finally get it done because I keep saying I'm going to buy it and I never have yet so so anyways I will catch up with you guys when we are on our descent we have managed to take off we've managed to get to the point now where uh, we're actually off the ground we're on our way back to uh, Good old England, Doncaster, England, so I will catch up with you on the descent path.
Alright, so we are now finally, after a few hours, lining ourselves up with the ILS for runway 02. We're hopefully going to be exiting the runway via Charlie, and we're going to head for gate number 6, according to the charts that I'm looking at right now. So, if we can do that, it'll be pretty cool, because Charlie is midway across the runway, so if we manage to slow down fast enough, we should be able to uh, vacate there and head to gate number six as planned, so that'll be pretty cool. Gotta say I'm really enjoying these flights, but I've gotta say as well, I would probably like them even more in the 777 because, I mean, it's such a bigger aircraft, you know, it's like a bigger challenge, so it's a, it's a bigger aircraft to learn, You've gotta learn it all over again, you know, you perfect my skills and stuff. Anything that challenges me, I just love doing, so whether it be a 777, or if you can recommend any other big jet that you want me to try out, let me know in the comments because, uh, as ever, I'm always interested in uh, challenging myself and learning a bit more. Uh, I will be doing less of these sorts of videos and more of the light aircraft ones to begin with, like I said, like I've been saying about 10,000 times now, uh, until I get used to it again, and then I will move on to uh, doing the heavies again. Uh, the 737-800 is my favourite one at the moment because... Unusually, I started learning that one before I started learning any other aircraft, uh, as soon as I got FSX, and uh, now obviously this is P3D, and I've moved straight over, I've bought the PMDG 737 again for uh, P3D, and I've just been using that ever since, until until as of late. Nice little wing view there, we're in a Thompson aircraft by the way, uh, I completely forgot to mention that we are in uh, Thompson, Tom 68 is the... Uh, flight number today. I forgot to tell you that and I probably forgot to put that in the FMC but I always fly uh, with Tom 68 Tango Oscar, Tango Oscar Mike, if I can get my words out 68 is uh, the flight number that I will more than likely always use unless I'm using a Ryanair or British Airways uh, plane but very unlikely because I do like this, uh, this new livery for Thompson's and personally, I just like the Thompson's Livery anyway. We've been with them no end of times on holidays and stuff, so it's one of my favourite liveries. So anyways, as I said, we'll be landing uh, at runway 02 here very shortly and hopefully vacating uh, via Charlie and heading for gate number 6. Uh, we've got a nice, nice little speed up of about 142 knots. I'm just going to try and keep uh, altering that. We're going to set the heading to the runway heading because we are heading in that direction. And that particular heading is 020 for runway 02. <laughs> what a coincidence that is. I can actually remember when I tried doing landings like this and turning off the autopilot at 1,000 feet, which I probably will do this time as well. well. We'll turn it off at about 1,000 feet and we'll do a manual landing and see how good I can actually do it because I always end up fucking up. So <laughs> we'll see what we can do. Wait while it gets to 1,000 feet and we'll disconnect the autopilot as they... Uh, they probably would do anyway. Uh, auto brake is set, everything's set, the uh, spoilers are armed. Landing gears down with three greens. Engine switches are already set to continuous and the flaps are set for landing which is uh, 30 degrees. So we're just waiting now for touchdown and we will disconnect the autopilot as soon as we hit 1000 feet. And there it is, 1000, so we'll disconnect the autopilot, and here we go, my aeroplane. Still got the auto throttle armed, just to sort of like compensate for any wind or anything, but I might turn that off in just a sec. But we are okay, I'm not going to touch the controls too much. Just going to try and get down. Really, really try and get down. There's a tree over here, by the way. There's Some of this scenery is a little bit fucked up on uh, Doncaster Sheffield Airport. Uh, there is a tree that gets in your way if you are too low, so uh, ideally I would either try and find a way to remove the tree or I should really be doing uh, an approach from a higher altitude. So we're going to take off the uh, auto throttle here. It's fully my aeroplane now, we've only got the auto brakes and auto spoilers set anyway. So we should be set to go and touch down as smoothly as possible. So. We are really getting close now, here we go. I'm going to start just lifting the nose up a little bit. That's that tree, by the way, that's just there. I think we've just the, the engine's just got it, so in real life we'll probably be uh, crashed by now. But here we go. Let's try and sort of centre the aircraft. Here we go. 
touchdown. That was a bit of a heavy one, but there we go. Reversers are active. Speed brake is up. Manual braking now. I know I should be letting the uh, auto brakes get there until about 60 knots, but I've just deactivated them anyway. There we go. Just turn them off. And we'll put the spoilers down as well. We've got an alert light, but we'll sort that out. And it looks like we're actually heading the right direction because Charlie is just up there on the left. So hopefully we'll be able to pull off at Charlie, uh, do the after landing uh, configurations and what have you, and then continue to taxi to the gate number six as planned. So for once, things appear to have gone to plan so far. Charlie's just coming up on the left here, so we're going to pull off. And uh, yeah, so this has been like two and a half hours, and it's been a really nice, pleasant flight, to be honest. I'm hoping that you've got some uh, some nice scenery there. I'm going to get the uh, the Orbix uh, FTX packs, obviously, and uh, that will improve things vastly. So let's just pull off the runway here, and we're going to go over this uh, threshold line, and we will set the parking brake and turn all the things off and the transponder and what have you, and just configure the aircraft ready to taxi to the gate. So let's just configure everything. We're going to obviously turn the uh, engines to normal, uh, landing lights off, taxi lights on, APU start, APU bleed can stay as it is for now, probe heats off obviously, and I think that's about it to be honest, we will turn the lights to steady, and we will, I think that's it to be honest, we'll turn off the transponder, just reset the frequencies, I always do that because sometimes for some reason it's like a glitch or something, it continues to uh, play the, the Morse code of the uh, airport even when you turn the transponder off sometimes which I have no idea why so anyways we are going to power up again now head towards gate number six which is just in front of us actually slightly to the left uh, in front of us near the terminal building there check for some traffic which there is none because we've got no traffic enabled so it's uh, happy days nice little wing view I love the wing view I really do I like the wing flex and everything Oops, that's my easy dock. I absolutely hate easy dock sometimes. There's only one fix for the annoying flashing that's caused by HDR lighting, and that is to remove uh, the control hotkey or something from the config file, but that ruins it. It sort of like corrupts it so that whenever you go from an exterior view to an interior view, uh, it likes to uh, place the camera in the completely the wrong place, so you have to manually right click and go into the cockpit, which is a bit of a mess about but uh, I suppose it's just something I'm going to have to live with until they come up with a fix so I'm going to turn off the taxi light so we don't blind people and here we are this is actually gate number six it's not got any jetways so we will be needing to uh, actually use the air stair but yes I hope you have enjoyed this uh, very short well, it's not really short but it's like sort of 40 like 30 40 minutes I think uh, video from Ibiza to Doncaster Sheffield or Robin Hood Airport in the United Kingdom. I will be doing a lot more of these videos in the future, but for now, I will be doing light aircraft videos. So thanks for watching, guys. Check out my Facebook and my Twitter. Message me and comment and favourite the video and all that lot if you enjoyed it or if you have any questions or anything. I always respond as much as I possibly can and as quickly as I possibly can. So yeah, feel free to message me and ask me anything you'd like, even if you want some help with your settings and whatever you're in P3D, because I know it can be... A nightmare trying to get this thing to work and it is it is version 3 and it's supposed to be uh, all you know flashing lights and happiness but actually it's not it took me a lot of time to work out how to get this to work properly on my machine uh, and this machine is built to run p3d and that's that's how much messing about it can be so anyways thanks for watching you guys and i'll see you in the next one